I'd like to introduce you to one of my favourite elements of mathematics. If you haven't come across continued fractions in your mathematical travels, then it is high time you did. Every real number, rational and irrational, can be represented as a continued fraction. While normal fractions can only represent rational numbers, continued fractions are different. Rational numbers produce finite continued fractions, while irrationals become infinite continued fractions. Let's just take a moment and see what we're talking about here. Take a number like 10 over 7. Well, we know that 10 over 7 is 1 and 3 sevenths in normal fraction terms. But as a continued fraction, it can be expressed somewhat differently. In fact, 10 over 7 has the unique privilege of being the continued fraction 1, 2, 3. This means it's, it's, it can be written as 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3. That converts back to 1 and 3 sevenths. Um, it's the same number, but expressed differently. Look at the diagrammatic representation. P is the, lies at the moment at the point 10, 7. Across 10, up 7. But that rectangle can be divided up. If we divide it using uh, squares, so for instance, the first square is a 7 by 7 square. So 10 can be written as one lot of 7 and some left over. We know 3 sevenths. 3 sevenths can be broken down the same way. Adding circles helps to see what's going on here. So this number we can see 1, 2 and 3. If I move P around continued fraction changes. 8 over 5 becomes a series of 1s. Now, converting a normal number or decimal to a continued fraction is not hard. Let's have a quick look. All you need is a calculator or a piece of paper and a pen. Suppose we're going to convert a number to a continued fraction. Let's take a number um, let's take 37 over 15. I could have entered it as a, um, as a decimal or in fact as a um, square root 2 or pi. We'll just use this one, 37 over 15. It's decimal form, 2.4 and then lots of sixes. Step one, separate the whole number part from the tail of your decimal. So the whole number part is 2. That's the first step of your continued fraction, the first convergent. So 37 over 15 is approximately equal to 2. Um, the error is about 20%. What's left we'll call the tail. That's the decimal part. In this case, 0.46666. If we turn that tail upside down, it goes from being a number less than 1 to being a number greater than 1 and it's now got a whole number part in front which we cut off and add to our continued fraction. So the second step of our continued fraction is another 2 leaving 0.142857 and so on. Now 2, 2 is the continued fraction 2 plus 1 over 2 or 2 and a half, 5 over 2 that's a pretty good approximation. What's left, you might recognise, is actually one seventh. When you turn that upside down, you get an exact number seven, which is the end, that's the third step of this continued fraction. Error zero, so 37 over 15 is two and two sevenths. Let's see what that... Did you hear that? That's our, our tool here, playing the continued fraction. 
So 37 over 15 is 2 and 2 sevenths. Its continued fraction form you can see is 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 7. It's still, it's approximately equal to 2.466 and so on. In diagrammatic form, we see the 2, the 2 and the 7. Now, any number, any real number can be expressed in this way. Let's look at some examples. This website is set up as a tool for exploring numbers such as these. It's intended for teachers and students, anyone with an interest in patterns and relationships, because that's what mathematics is all about. Let's have a look at this number, very special number, the golden ratio or golden mean. Okay, its actual value 1 plus root 5 all over 2 doesn't look all that impressive until you convert it to continued fraction form, where we see it becomes a string of 1s. Some say that this is the most irrational number of all, because it never gets any closer or further apart, the far, it, it closes in on the number in, an, in a very regular way. Most irrational numbers aren't so regular. Now square root 2 in continued fraction form is another one that's interesting. It's 1 plus a string of 2's. Okay, what about square root 3? Well, to get this, we're going to actually solve a quadratic equation. Because that's another way you can generate continued fractions. The square root of 3 in continued fraction form is 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. Now remember, these are irrational numbers. You look at their decimal form and it's unpredictable. In fact, that's generally how we teach irrational numbers. We teach them to students as numbers that are unpredictable. We, don't, we know how big they are, but if you try and pin them down, well, it turns out that continued fractions don't follow that rule. They can be predictable. If your number is a quadratic, if it's a quadratic irrational, then its continued fraction form is periodic. It has a repeati repeating section, like phi, the golden ratio, like square root 2, like square root 3. Square root 5. Its continued fraction form Two, four, 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 four. What this means is, suppose you want to calculate square root of 5 as accurately as possible, and you've got a computer to help you with it. So you've got the decimal approximation, but how do you get better than that? Your decimal approximation may be at most 14 decimal places. Well, using continued fractions, and continually calculating, calculating, which is easy work for a computer, you can get as close as you want to any number. That's very important in our current time where you need very good approximations for numbers for all sorts of purposes. So continued fractions are a terrific tool for uh, getting better and better approximations. This worksheet here uh, provides a bunch of explorations and different representations for students to think about and understand numbers. But then we come to this one. So the quadratics we've looked at so far have been periodic. They're, they're the exception. Pi is a transcendental number. Look at its continued fraction form. Once again, now we think, oh, we're stuck with unpredictable. Um, and that's true. The simple continued fraction forms for 
transcendental numbers do give you a, a random sequence, well not a random, but an unpredictable sequence of numbers. In this case, 3, 7, 5, 1, 292. But that's not the whole story. Continued fractions do come in more than one flavour. Not just simple, like the ones we've looked at, where the numerators are all ones, but general continued fractions too. Have a look at these two. So pi, another version of the continued fraction of pi, is given here, and there are multiple versions. Look at the first, the, the lower sequence of numbers, the, new, the denominators, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, the odd numbers. And the numerators, we begin with a 4, but then 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, and so on. Suddenly pi becomes predictable it becomes able to be calculated to any degree of accuracy you like. What about E? Now E is the Euler's number. Look at one of the continued fraction forms for E. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Once again, it becomes predictable. So there's a wealth of exploration and this activity, this web page provides all the tools needed for students to explore continued fractions in a variety of, in a variety of representations. There's a spreadsheet. Here we have, uh, this one's the square root of 5 that we were just looking at. There's 10 over 7, where we started, 1, 2, 3. 43 over 30 is 1, 2, 3, 4. What fraction would represent 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? See, it's lovely, simple things like that that students can explore. There's a short assessment task once students have played around with the ideas on the page and some simple questions that get them thinking more deeply. There are various representations. For instance, if you're exploring a um, continued fraction, you want to share it with a, a colleague, a classmate. This will represent it using QR code. Or you can listen to the continued fraction, like 1, 2, 3, 4. Then there are links to a whole other, what I've called the continued fraction collection. A whole new set of activities and worksheets on each of these on golden numbers, on generalised continued fractions and how to generate them, on fiery numbers, magnificent kissing circles, Bessel functions and gamma functions, higher mathematics that's accessible and interesting to explore. Even chaos theory touches continued fractions. So there's a wealth of exploration and interest here for students and teachers to, uh, to explore this amazing topic. And believe me, once you've started to delve a little bit into continued fractions, you will never look at numbers quite the same way again.